being a living sacrifice. Those that will go on to enjoy millennial reign of peace on earth. A living sacrifice. You say God does not look at the body. You join yourself with Esau to say that uh, Isaac is blind. And yet he lived up to 80 years later. We better stop <laughs> talking against the patriarch, the representation of God on earth. Say God does not see the body. God is telling you that before he sees the body, he looks at the intent of the heart. When man looks at the body, he looks at the heart. It's what God is letting you know that your sacred place, with all your fake lifestyle of Ananias and Sapphira, you once of a church, 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 when did you become church member of Dano? If you are truly of the body of Judah, we are still temple of the living God. First Corinthians 3.16, First Corinthians 6.19, Second Corinthians 6.16. Tells you that we are temple. In fact, he asks you, do you not know that you are temple of the living God? The Lord is only standing at the door to call you out. Say, behold, I stand at the door. Revelation 3, 19 to 20. To call you out. He know you were enslaved there. Not of your own will. Some of our foreparents did not want to go there because they know this one is not like our temple. Though. But they had no will to fight much. They were forced during slavery into church. Now you like it so much, you don't want to come out. God said, come out from amongst them. Them, come out. You see that even from the time of young man Saul, he was going to them in their houses. While they were obeying Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered, there I am in their midst. Even when I was alone, the Lord revealed himself to me. I... Sometimes, though not again, sometimes I used to wish, oh, maybe God should have revealed himself when my children, my daughter was at home or my son, somebody else to confirm. But God does not do things for sure. So if the Lord can reveal himself to you individually on a personal level, means you must be serving the Lord on a personal level. If not, all this, your entertainment, blue light church, down of all sorts going on. It's not going to take you far. It's just sending people on the Proverbs 14, 12 way. That seemed so right. In fact, it seems so right. If you start to argue with those ones, you are wasting your time. You need to rather go and battle spiritually for their soul. Because that road seems so right. But the end thereof is destruction. So I've colored it in. This is the message of the very man. When you look at body wise, so, but the spirit of God now in that man, with Saul out, the spirit of, of God has come in, is now opposed to Paul. He's saying, I plead with you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to present your bodies. He said, God does not look at body. Is that he looks at heart first. But because this timeline after Calvary is more body timeline and he's looking for a body vessel, he's looking at body now more than ever. More than he did during the time of Abu God, more than the time of Israel, Lord. Now the time of you, body vessels, ah, he's looking at the vessel. It's looking at your body. So you that even open your mouth to talk. So if God truly did not look at the body, this is how you do all sorts of rubbish with the body, broken for you. Why the scripture says glorify God in that body? You say because God is not looking. So you do what you like with it. You go to clubhouse. You see yourself. By your thought and your intent, you will be judged. Therefore, I plead with you, I beg you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer, sometimes the other scriptural way of writing comes to mind, some verse to present your body as a living sacrifice. It's more presentation, not offer, because Yeshua has 
become the perfect offering, perfect sacrifice. But we are now to present our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, not to your Pharisee, not to Esau. And when you do that, then that meets up with your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Paul was the one sent to the corners of the world. He was rugged. He also have acted like a Boko Haram kind, if you want me to use that word to an extent. So, he was rugged. He's unlike Peter that was not used to the sword of the Romans, the wickedness of these ones. Wherein he denied the Lord three times before Calvary and before Pentecost. But thank God he was restored in John 21, 15. To sound, see what in the Lord says, Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. After he said to the Lord that yes, he loved the Lord three times to cancel out the three time denial. So, Apostle Paul is saying, Do not be conformed to this world. He was using the world word correctly because that's the side he was sent to. Remember, it was. Take it to Italy, Rome. Sometimes I wonder if it's not Apostle Paul that they built that uh, basilica upon. They say it's up, uh, upon uh, uh, Apostle Peter. It's a lie. Because Apostle Peter and some, they faced the corners of the earth, the north part of the earth. The Lord is on Mount Zion. The north part that they call South Africa for you. Psalm 48, surrounded by mountains. All you can see in these islands are hills. That's it. So, but let me not divert so much. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. If your mind is not even renewed, you'll be facing rapture. Hey, great tribulation is about to happen. Ah! Ah, not a wonderful it was first annoying but it was a wonderful truth or privilege to be made to understand the truth that's all this one that's why to an extent there's some truth I don't still know thank God for the one the Lord has let me know I am not the Holy Spirit I don't know it all to the extent that some of the other ones I'm still asking the Holy Spirit and studying I question Esau's translation of the script he never should have taught the script but he has done it to his own destruction. According to 2 Peter 3.16, the unstable, the ignorant. When you hear unstable and ignorant, that is Esau. If you hear ignorant only, uh -huh, maybe the children of God can be ignorant, according to Isaiah 4, 6. But when you, they are unstable, if you break that word down, unstable, they don't have the spirit of sense, able, able God. They don't have the spirit in them. So they are not able to do anything good. They can always lie and pretend to be good. What good is there in a wicked man that does pump poverty and use a toy to get a child smile? The same way they use sweet to tempt a small girl and then rape her in the name of porn. The Lord God will judge you. If anyone causes anyone or make any of the children of the earth to fall, literally or spiritually. The word of God says it's better that a giant millstone be hung around the neck of such Pharisee, such Esau, such godless Gentile of Psalm 83 form, and they be drowned in the sea. So they like their black sea, red sea, dead sea. Sea people. We are river people. So, it will be better for them to be drowned in the sea. That is like a better option compared to the hell and the torture and the pain waiting them in hellfire. So, let them be dancing around with their fake billion, billionaire, trillionaire. What profit those who gain the world and 
And then go on to lose your soul. They don't even have soul in any sense. So let them just go down. They're just flesh and blood. So do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will. The good, the pleasing, and perfect will. You say you don't know the will of God for your life. Check yourself. Are you holy? With your fake hair, fake bum, fake everything now. Christians have tried. Even in, oh, in the pulpit, on the pulpit, they pull themselves into the pit. We are not poor peace people. People belong to Esau and the church he built for Dan, his father. We are children of the temple of the living God and we deal with altar. Anyone that now tries to turn the altar of God like Jeroboam into strange altar, they will be judged like the two sons of Aaron. We are altar people. So even the walls, there is you know, similarity, yet yeah, difference. Altar, pulpit. Earth world, you know, you have to understand the difference. If I they flip flop it for you, you'd be saying amen. Amen. So much of these ones who are into you know worldliness. I see how they pray. Let's worship Jesus. They don't want to say Jesus Christ, they don't want to even acknowledge that there are two Jesus in the Bible, according to NIV. They don't want to acknowledge. So, I'm just going to round it up. This same Apostle Paul that is preaching here that you should be holy is the one that wants to prepare you for the second coming of Christ. He is talking about the second coming of Christ in Thessalonians. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Apostle Paul here was talking about the second coming. And I've been gathered to him. He's talking generally as the body of the living temple. We ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. That man doomed to destruction. Rapture is done by this time. For Apostle Paul who was saved after rapture events of Calvary, he is talking about the second coming as he started. See how they put the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord should make you excited as children of God. It is always a Malachi 4 5 day of the Lord. The great day for the children of God. Papa is coming to deliver us from our wicked enemies of Psalm 83 4. Wicked, wicked enemy of Esau, Ezekiel 7 24. So, for Esau and the enemies, the Gentiles, it is going to be. A very dreadful day. So the day of the Lord that is coming is the day of the Lord that came just before 70 years after Calvary completed. This day of the Lord, as I try to show here, if I can still see it, with Calvary there, 1,000 years, Plus another thousand years. We are here. This is where we are here. We are about to go to millennial reign of peace on earth. On the third day of peace on earth. And then we will be raised up at the coming of the Lord. We will see him. We will be raised up to life. So now. After Calvary. There was 70 years for everyone in Israel. To clear themselves away. After Calvary. This is within the timeline. Of Paul. Paul is past Calvary rapture event. But that day of the Lord coming to clear all of them, the Lord first used, as in Ezekiel 7, 24, used the most wicked to clear the Israelites who refused to obey the prophets, the likes of Jeremiah, to clear themselves, oh, these people that gave you peace and safety deal are coming to clear you away. Oh, they are wicked people. We can't trust them. They say they are enjoying peace and security. The temple of the Lord is here. Nothing can happen. So, 
those one came and destroyed the temple, not one stone was left on top of another, according to the saints of the Lord in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. So, between Calvary and 70 years was the day of the Lord. To force use the enemy to clear the Israelites away and scatter us, dragging us into slavery. And the enemy now served and served there the last three and a half years to 70 years completing. That is the three and a half years of Revelation 11 given to the Gentiles. As the Lord now came and poured his own dread and wrought on, upon them, turning their own hill into a land of desert jackals. Go and read about God's word against them in Ezekiel 35, Malachi 1, 3 to 4. God bless you for following. Shalom.